I want to welcome David Wills, a local resident in the Haight-Ashbury, an incredible artist of many different styles. Um, welcome, David. Thank and, you. Uh, I would love to know where you were born and what year, and tell us a little about your early years. Fine. Um, I was born in Camberley in England and moved when I was one to Amesbury in Wiltshire, about three miles from Stonehenge. Uh, and then when I was about, piss off! <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was 14, I moved to London and uh, went to art school until I was 20 and then took off and became an artist. Um, what were your parents' names? Uh, my mum was Ina Elizabeth Townley, and then she married Cecil Solomon Wills. Do you have any brothers and sisters? I have two brothers. I have uh, Peter Lindsay Edmund and Robin Cecil Charles. Peter's still in London and Robin is in Tasmania. Uh, either of you, anybody, anybody in your family artistic or musical? Uh, well, everybody's artistic, but none, um, the verge, my daughter Anne is a uh, musician in New York. She has a band called the, what is it, it's the Dream Bitches. Oh, <laughs> it's a, the, the, a statement of the time, let's put it that way. Yes. Um, uh, you went to school in England? Yes. Was and that. did you ever study for your art? Yeah, I went to art school when I was 14. In what city? In Twickenham. And um, what did you think you were going to be doing with your art, and what inspired you to start doing art? Uh, well, what it, I guess was one of the reasons I went to art school was because I didn't get into, uh, didn't, I didn't pass the 11 plus, which is this ridiculous exam they give you. And so after that, I had an opportunity to go to art school, which I took, and I had no idea what an I artist did. I think like, Einstein failed some sort yes. of math <laughs> test. <laughs> There's a lot to be said. Um, and uh, you, you, you graduated. Uh, what schools or in? And did you go to? Uh, here we have high school. Do you have high school there? And uh, the art school was like high school. school. It was uh, there was two years preparatory, and then there was four years um, called senior art school, I guess. Right. And I studied uh, graphic design and illustration. Uh, did have your did your early styles of art and what you do now change in any way? Uh, my style depends upon the job, and so I guess it depends what I'm working on. And right. It's always been like that. Changes. Did you start? Um, did you make money at all from your art as a young uh, person? Well, first of all, I started working off in advertising agencies, and I was in '67. I was uh, working in an advertising agency in London. I did the classic turn on in Hyde Park with a joint, and right. and never looked back. Right. <laughs> Um, did you ever work for any, uh, any of your artwork show up in any magazines and publications or newspapers uh, before you came over here? Yeah. Uh -huh. What, Lots. do you know the names of any of these? Uh, well, magazines? I worked on Town Magazine, which was a sort of lad's mag from, uh, early 62. I was assistant art editor on that, art director on that. I had illustrations in that. Um. Were they and line drawings? Were they color? Were they? Um, uh, I think it was. They were mostly line drawings. Line drawings. But um, I, I had loads of different jobs. But the most uh, towards in '67, I was working on uh, Oz magazine. Uh, and um, where was that out of? That was out of London. Out of London. I was still be, still being. Uh, oh no! <laughs> it got wonderfully prosecuted in 1970, and they had a huge. Uh, trial at the Old Bailey in which the three editors got sentenced to jail. And, My goodness. And so I guess those are very collectible if you find one of oh, those yeah, somewhere. Yes. What was the focus of that magazine? That, uh, that well, it was, psych it was a psychedelic color magazine. You right. Know. Um, like the Berkeley Bard or the Oracle? or Yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, same, same feeling. Yes. Um, um, I worked for them on and off, you know, in between jobs and stuff like that. Um... So then, somewhere in your life, about what age, you 
somehow got inspired to come to America. Can you tell us a little about that and where uh, you landed and about when yeah, that was? That, when, when I was working in an advertising agency, I told them I was going to go to New York. So they gave me a sabbatical. So I guess I'm still on sabbatical. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went to New York and hung out in the Lower East Side. Um, went to see Paul Krasner at the uh, Realist. Yep. Uh, a long friendship. And he had meetings. the village uh, yeah, voice. That's and right, and got to meet the first of the realist nuns. Right. And who, Margot was a real, Margot St. James was right. a realist nun after I was there. Right. Yeah. Did you ever do any artwork or work in New York, or was it just uh, a visit? No, I just, um, I most wonderfully had a, uh, I had a great time there, staying with Bryce Marden. Who was right, when year, what year was this? This was 67. Did you ever go to any of the concerts in the park and the gatherings of the um, people? Or? No, I didn't, I don't think. I can't remember any, but that doesn't mean I didn't go. <laughs> Did you ever go to um, to any of the performances in the village? They had uh, yeah, I went to see Loving the Spoonful, Beatles, was... Frank Zappa, uh, Andy Warhol, I've, that was the crowd. Yeah, right. I was hanging with Andy Warhol's crowd at the, right. um, some bar or other. Exactly, um, and then they would have parties with uh, with Warhol and underground. Yeah, I never parties. met Warhol, but I met his substitute, the guy who used to go teaching for him when exactly uh, lecturing, driving exactly. around. Um, about how long were you in New York? I was there about thirty days or something. Oh, that's a lot for thirty days. <laughs> <laughs> and then where'd you go from there? Uh, then I went back to London and uh, got on with life in London. Uh, worked on Oz Magazine and all the other things I worked on. I got a list of them down here someplace. Town Magazine, yeah, I mentioned that. Oz, Curious. It was a sex education magazine. All the magazines I worked for around 70 all got busted. Alternative magazines, yeah. right. I was working next door to one of the uh, censors at the Chamberlain's office, Lord Chamberlain's office, and he did not like Curious Magazine, so he was going <laughs> to bust me. So he busted Oz, Curious, IT, I don't know. There were other magazines as well. Well, did did you find uh, uh, doing artwork there and doing work there compared to the kind of freedom of speech here in America and non censorship? Uh, I, I found San Francisco to be very conservative when I got here. I th you know, compared with London, I think it still is. When did you come to San Francisco? Uh, I first here in '69. In '69, I um, had a friend who had been eating. Uh, goat cheese in Italy and she got a disease in her eye and so she was coming out to Los Angeles to get it cured. It didn't work, but we got to drive up to San Francisco. So I, Did you get bitten? I left my heart in that's San right. Francisco. Yes, I liked it. I thought I was going to come back and live in Humboldt County, but I never did. When you first moved to the Haight-Ashbury, where'd you live? Uh, on, oh, let's see. Now, I, I, first of all, in 73, I left London and went to Mill Valley. I lived in various houses in Mill Valley, and the first place I lived in San Francisco was on uh, Jackson and Baker, right in the middle of Pacific Heights, right. in the basement. Right. And then I moved to Church and Market with Molly Rodriguez, who's a wonderful belly dancer, and she's now married to... Uh, Her husband, or whatever his name is. Exactly. <laughs> well, we can always fill it in with yes, this um, ongoing uh, research. Um, yes. Um, did you have a feeling like a lot of people did when they came to the Haight Ashbury, uh, the community, the family, the music family, the art family? Yeah. And did that hit you? Did that happen to you? And when? when well, I knew about it from London, of course. There was a lot of communication between London and San Francisco in totally. the sixties. You know, we used to totally. people used to get off the plane and come and visit us. I came back and forth myself as well. Heard so about us. Yeah. Did um, uh, when you when you came to San Francisco? Did uh, as you settled in? Did you start getting work? We were involved uh, in yeah, almost immediately. I came here. I started working at Rolling Stone magazine. I was designing exhibition stands for them for the book festival, book fair in Los Angeles. Did you ever um, was, do any artwork for posters? Uh, not, f um, not for, for friends, because that's the way it was in the early yeah, days. Right, friend of a friend, though. We John needed by I worked with John Goodchild, who just died exactly. a couple of years back. Yes. Uh, 
um, and he was he was working at Rolling Stone and Straight Arrow Books. Right. And that's where I was. Right. Um, and then I got caught up with Margaret St. James. In, that could easily be done. That could easily be done, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, I'm interested in seeing if you wanted to show us a uh, style that you would consider the kind of artwork you would choose to do if you could. Um, you have many different styles, and, and you say that when you get asked to work on a project, the, the producer, whoever, will, um, uh, will uh, tell you what the project is, and then you do the artwork by the themes. I'd love to start to get in to, to see some of the different styles is that a, you work in. This is a poster I did for Margaret and James uh, long after the original uh, uh, Hooker's Ball had finished. This was done in 96 or something like that. That's beautiful. Yes, I saw another poster that looked like it had cribbed from this, but maybe they cribbed from the same place that I cribbed from, so where, I'm not sure. Where did you get your inspiration for the uh, I forget now what the what, what it was. With the theme of yeah, the There's American a current poster place. around that's very similar to this. Yes. Uh, is that enough for the moment? Oh, I'd love to see more. Okay. Um, this was a poster that I did for... It's beautiful. For Hate Street, uh, it was commissioned by the merchants of Hate Street. They each of each of the stores contributed about two fifty dollars or something, and uh, it was printed. It was, this was the last poster printed by Lavan Moscovia himself. Oh wow! And uh, this, so that's the neighborhood community are uh, uh, showing interest to the hate and what goes on that's in the right. hate. Yeah. And this was a message. very large watercolor. Beautiful, interesting. Very it's very beautiful. It's a whole different style. It's beautiful. This was a poster for the uh, on the buses. I remember seeing that. Yes. <laughs> really yes. nice. Shopping this was eight. the first. It's still got ongoing. Um, what's it's a great name? idea. Yeah, the guy who produces them. He's got the glass store on Eighth Street. That's right. Yeah, he he does them. He he's been taking the photographs for the most. Do you know his name? Uh, yes, of course I do. It'll come to It'll you. Come. It'll we'll come and we'll, we'll, yes. we'll write what it is. Um, I am. Uh, I've I've been told that you got interest. You got involved with a lot of the community in the Haight Ashbury. And, yes, I've. And I'd love to know a little bit about the feeling of the community yes. in the Haight Ashbury. I know you're an artist, but you you we interact with musicians and uh, and writers and. Uh, there's a street fair that somehow I've heard you've been involved with. I'd love to learn a little more about that. Yes, um, I love the neighborhood. It is, I'm part of it. I protect the trees on the street from vandals breaking them. Breaking them. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, he's still out there. He must have. I, I got attacked just recently on Haight and Ashbury by a guy who's been breaking twigs off the trees, which we all love in the Haight. It's just like the sign of, you yes. know, the community wants to. And maybe this person somehow needs to be sat down by the community and I, smell a rose or something, you know. I, don't I, know. I think he's schizophrenic. Yeah, very possible. I think he's beyond help. Possible. Um, so, and... Um, I, I've lived in the same house since 77, and that's... Where is that of, house? Uh, on Ashbury Street. On Ashbury. Between Hayton and Page. Very close to Hayton Street. Yes. Um, what was the street like in that in those days? In, uh, well, when, when I was first, first here came? in 73, the, the street was very closed down. There was a lot, lots of stores closed. And, uh, they were rebuilding. Uh, well, they was weren't the even rebuilding at that time. I guess it was like when I when I started to live in the Hayton in '75. That I think was when the street started to come back, and I started working with uh, Shady Grove, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful nightclub right. on Hayton Street. I used to Can you there. tell us where that was? Uh, it was uh, where the, there's a, an Ethiopian restaurant there now between uh, Ashbury and Clayton. Oh. On the north side, Ashbury and Sonic, or Ashbury? no Ashbury and Clayton. Oh, and Clayton. Yes. And uh, oh, that's right. And um, what happened there? What kind of uh, place was there? Was uh, rock and roll five nights a week, movies on the fifth day, and one day I guess they had off. 
and uh, I, remember as I, since I lived around the corner, I was in there all the time. Right. It was great. And it had a bar, and so it's it a community a pub, kind of. That's right. I used to drink orange juice. And right. Nice drink beer. Did you remember any of the music you saw? Are there any of the names? Uh, of yeah, people? Comfort. Um, I don't think that Loose Gravel ever played there, but I used to like Loose Gravel. Comfort, uh, Moby Gray. Uh, I had a poster. Oh, wonderful. Did you <laughs> do any I, artwork for Yeah, for I, did, I used to do all the posters. Here you go. Roadhog, Cat Mother, Hedzoli, Viridiana. Oh, what's the name of the movie? Duck's Breath Mystery Theater. They, they were there all the time, yes. We'd love to see it if you could turn it around. Yes. Is that good? Yes. Yeah, that was a wonderful introduction to San Francisco. So, when did they close? Uh, 79, I think, so, something like that. Do you know yes. why they closed? Or? Yeah, they didn't have they, no, no sound protection there at all. You could so, the noise hear it control. Halfway down the block, yes. Exactly. Um, then you got involved with with Pablo with the Hate Street Fair. Yes, uh, I was in the committee that, that met with um, uh, Harvey Harvey Milk. We had a meeting at Shady Grove and got it all together. Um, I worked a lot with James Von Eman. He's he was the guy who used to book Shady Grove and was pretty much responsible for starting the street fair. Well, did you did the artwork for the first? Uh... Yes, the first the, the first street fair. It wasn't a competition then. It was just uh, it was um, I was asked to do it just because I was the only artist around at that time. Could you tell us a little bit about that poster and uh, yes and the repercussions of it being made at then and the, the award that you got I believe I or it won no. a contest of some kind. No, there was no contest for that. As they say, I was about the only artist around at that time, so I got to do it. So it was hand drawn and uh, on the on the screen and hand cut stencils and it was printed wow. by um, there were only about two hundred of them printed. Wow! Um, I forget the name of the guy who uh, printed it, but I got his name. name so right it, not on Hate Street, somewhere in San Francisco. No, it was on it, it was, was on Hate Street. Um, Hate Ashbury. It was Some a normal. Printers, it was one of those copy places, and they no, it was, no, it was an actual lithograph. Yeah, type it's, silk screen serigraph. So you're saying that how many were printed of these? I uh, think it was, that's the first edition. No, that's the second edition. Um, that was two hundred. Uh, I think that edition was two hundred, and the previous edition was hundred and fifty. So. And where were they put up? All along Hay Street on no, the poles. People put them up in in restaurants. Yes, in the windows. Right, yes, people, mostly down Hay Street. Yeah. Now, about what year was that again? That's uh, seventy-eight. Is it seventy-seven? So that's the first. That's uh, the first street fair. And now, two thousand five. What number are we getting ready I to happen in June? Must be getting up to thirty by now. Exactly. So, you know, that's what we'll find out from Pablo. Yes. Wonderful. And so you get you pretty much you are doing some of these still? These uh, Every work? now and then I enter the competition, but I never ever win. So, so <laughs> how does it work now to do a poster for the H Street Fair? Uh, there's a competition, you enter in the competition, but it's worldwide now. It's on it's online, so you could enter the competition really? from Mombasa, if you will. Really? Yeah. And then yeah. who decides? How does uh, it Pablo decides. Pablo he the, pretends the, it's the a promoter. He pretends it's a, a committee, but... <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so you attended that first fair. Yes, that was. The, and was what the, was that it, like? It was the best fair ever. It Can was you so tell good. me a little about it? Where uh, it ran well, people from? were so excited to be back on the street. You, uh, nobody had closed Hate Street down since the Grateful Dead were there, and so this one was an opportunity to do it again. Exactly. In in recent years, uh, my friend Cat Bell and I have always had a tea party on the street. We have two booths that Pablo gives us, and we give away free tea and cakes. Well, where do you usually set that up? <laughs> it's outside the grocery store. They give us free electricity. So and what part tea. of Haight is that? Haight and uh, Haight Nashbury. Where else? Haight Nashbury. Over yes. Haight. Um, what type of uh, uh, setup was that fair? Was it, did it have a stage? Did it have booths? Was there music? Uh, was it this, just vendors? Uh, uh, the first one. Really there were three main, there were three big stages. It was it was 
um, so there's been very music. intense, and we were all learning how to do it. I remember um, uh, Camille and I worked on a banner. Camille. Uh, Camille she, Houston. Camille Houston. I think she was she on uh, Lion and Page, yes, in the right. actually. We worked on banners for all sorts of things, including the uh, Hooker's Bowl. And hey. we did this wonderful banner for the street fair, and it was like 35 feet long and stretched across the, the road, air vents, but the wind was too wind, strong. Yeah. Up and, uh, <laughs> Through the years, what practice you learn to cut these air vents? Uh, we yeah. cut air vents in it, but there weren't the enough. Were, the, uh, uh, the fire department was helping us put it up, and uh, they said it was too dangerous that it was going to blow the fireman <laughs> off the roofs. <laughs> <laughs> so they had music on the street. Um, they provided food that, that the community could buy, uh, and there were vendors yes, selling yes. their crafts, the, the, pretty much. Yes. Um, I, the, the big thing about the, f the first street fair was that there, were, there weren't so many commercial uh, vendors as there are now. There were artists. There, there were a lot of artists. Artisans, and, yes. And of course, it was a lot cheaper in those days. So. Right. Does, do you feel the community, the Haight-Ashbury community, benefits from this event? Ah, uh, definitely, yes. It gives it a really strong community feeling, I think, coming out of the street fair. Um, there's a, of course, I was reading Charles Perry's book on uh, 67 in the Hay, and uh, he said that there were 150,000 hippies living in the Hay at that time. And, well, I, I think you probably count the number of hippies living in the Hay now on here two hands exactly <laughs> so there's not quite this the, uh, the the culture that there was but there's still a strong feeling for it well we have an upcoming uh, fair coming uh, in the next few months I was curious since you were at the first had you been at the last last year yeah oh, yes and do you see a difference in it and do you feel that e each somehow each the spirit of the hate is is being it benefited. manifests through the street fair, definitely. Yes. yes. Each each street fair is very different, has its own quality and character. And I think a lot of it concentrates on the tea party that we give. Right. Because <laughs> all the workers come Has it gotten a lot larger than it had in the uh, beginning? Last year was slightly less large than the previous year, but I think each year it gets bigger. It gets bigger. The people from other parts of San Francisco communities come and join in the, the celebration. Oh, uh, yes. And a lot of people. Come back every year. And Can't find come parking. Come back to our tea party and say, "Oh, I remember coming here ten years ago." Exactly. <laughs> Must they wear a hat? <laughs> I'm sorry. Must they wear a hat? <laughs> like Mad Hatter's hat. Oh, right. Yes. yes. Must the Mad Hatter's tea party. Yes. Exactly. Yes, that's us. I was um, I was really interested to see some more of your artwork. Um, anything at all that maybe involved the Hate Ashbury, but if you come across something else interesting to show your style, I would love to see it. Ooh. It's the Hate Ashbury Literary Journal, which I work for occasionally, doing illustrations for, for a while. I was designing the the covers for them. I worked with. Is uh, that still hap is oh, that yes, still being published? Going, yeah. And how do you get a copy of it? Uh, you buy it on the street. It's sold by yes. someone selling it on the street. Uh, I also worked on. This wasn't one of my covers, but sort of gives you the idea. The Hate Ashbury Free Press. That's lovely. That was, um, now, that's it's beautiful, but in the old 60s style, difficult to to look at. Can you explain that to us a little bit? What is on the cover? Yes. I have no clue what's on the cover. This yes, is, and that's part of the style of the 60s. That's part of the style. <laughs> of the 60s. What year is this? This is 95, March 95. David Hoffman, he, he was the editor. And how were you involved with this one? I was designing it, you know. Beautiful. I was looking for something I worked on. Yeah. yeah, my filing system isn't what it should be. We'd love to see some more. Yes. Um, and some of your favorites or anything? Yeah, this was... Um, that was Music Works that I, that was um, a magazine that I published with Diane Rappaport. Uh, this, the cover was interesting because it was a picture of a, of a Venusian uh, playing the Golden Gate Bridge as a harp, which is what somebody alluded to it when they uh, built the place, built it. 
And uh, later on, in about 10 years after I did that, we actually went out and uh, recorded the sound of the Golden Gate Bridge by putting a frap on it, taping it to one of the 365-foot tall cables and uh, recorded the sound of the longest guitar string in the world. Then a friend of mine made music from that. I'd love to see some more. I'm just uh, in wonder of seeing your beautiful artwork. Uh, there must be more stuff here. Well, that was, that was this is another copy of Music Works with a photograph of Marty Ballin that he did not like <laughs> sticking his tongue in. We only did three copies of this magazine. Really? Yes. It was very influential. I know um, the library has it in their yes, collection. Yes, it went on to become a book called uh, Making and Selling Your Own Record. I mean, exactly. It was sort of the book behind the... In, I think in, I've in, seen a copy of that as well yes, in the collection. I think it's out of print now, but it was fine. I'd love to see anything else in your portfolio. Just take your own time. Okay. Um, I think um, anything you would like to show us that so we shouldn't this, miss. And this is a wonderful it. book that I just uh, finished work on called Beautiful. Homework. Homework. Uh, it's done out of Bolinas, and I work for the publisher in Bolinas, and uh, it's a book about inspiration for building your own home. And the book is full of photographs of amazing places. I think in the 60s there was a book called, an oversized book called Shelter. Well, this is what, this is the 30 year, the, the author of this is the same author of, of Shelter. Shelter. And so this is Shelter 30 years old. Look at these teepees that I can yes, build right, on my yes. own. <laughs> uh, these, he, these geodesic domes. And he, uh, he was the guy who popularized geodesic domes. Exactly. Um, uh, Lloyd Kahn, and uh, he backtracked on domes later on because they leak, because they don't have a roof on them as well. Well, if you felt free to show us anything more, I'd, be, I'd love to see something. Uh, I'm also I think curious. I went through everything as far okay. as I, uh, that I brought. Well, we might invite you back to show us some more. Yes, um, I've got tons more. I just Beautiful. Went through, yeah. Or maybe we'll come to you to yeah. you to be easier. Yes. Um, I'm curious what kind of. Uh, uh, artwork you're doing now, where do you see your future going, uh, um, and also um, in, in, in where you see maybe the Haight-Ashbury at present is through its art, through its music, through its family of people. Um, well, uh, yeah. I guess um, this is the most recent thing that a uh, book that I've worked on, the homework book, and uh, I see myself doing more stuff like more books. Well, like I can that. see this as a, a, a an ex expansion of the family and being creative and individual in your home, in your lifestyle and living well, my, your dream. My house in the hate now is worth some horrendous sum of money and people keep on asking me if I want to sell it. So, But you wouldn't move, I right? wouldn't want to move. I why, mean, where, would I, why, where would I go from the hate? You why know, Why would you would not, <laughs> Would you not want to move? I would. What's keeping you here? Uh, friends and family. Beautiful. Yes. So you're part of the community and... Uh, involved with, with the family on all levels. I, I mean, I'm, and I see that the reason you wouldn't move is because that's your home within this family, and you're so talented with your art, so you get to contribute to the family, and that that message continues the out, the outskirts of the Haight Ashbury community. I'd say that I'd go along with that. Yes. If yes. someone sees this video a hundred years from now. Um, and you have you see your life and your your path that you've been on, and you've come from another country across the ocean and New York, San Francisco, and now you've made it made this your home to keep alive the the values of the hate, um, the uh, to keep the hate Ashbury more of the community and less corporate and less kept, keep it family and. Hopefully it, it can, as people are inspired. How would you like to see, uh, young people to see what your path has been in life? And do you feel you've contributed? And um, and and I'd, I'd love to see your opinion on some of that. Mm. Well, that's a big question. Uh, yes, I would like to see kids uh, coming into the hate, and I see it all around me, you know. Uh, 
it's uh, it's definitely still has an attraction for people, and I think that they're coming for the right reasons. Um, I don't know. That's a big. <laughs> Would, would you like the hate to still be here in a hundred years? I'm sure it will be, but uh, the way house prices are going, I don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. Happen. Yes. Uh, I think that the spirit of the hate took off and went around the world. I think that the hate is maybe the starting place for it. But I, it's, the summer of love, the spirit yes, of peace. definitely. I've been working with Waterfall on uh, the, uh, the Waterfallium. That, uh, it's, my the first, it's my first exercise in writing. I've always been uh, an, an illustrator designer before, and so I get a chance to be able to say things in there that I, that I fumble for saying in front of the camera. Right. I should I should bring some copies of that to read. No, I think this has been wonderful, totally wonderful. I've been so impressed with the artwork and uh, and your sharing of your life and community and. Uh, we definitely feel you've contributed to society, the community, um, and uh, your your next door neighbor, your your person across the ocean, and and uh, young people as well as uh, um, uh, contributing to the events and publications and all types of things. And this is the business of making people enjoy their day and. Smell the roses. Absolutely. So we yes. want to thank you so much, David, for being part of this. We will be asking you back and, or maybe coming to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just want to say thank you so much for, thank you. for contributing.